Hello, Dark Reader, and welcome to the Dark Side of the Library podcast. I'm your host, Katie. Today, we are going to be talking, instead of a mini-sode, we're going to go through some of the comics that have been released during February and March. I'm trying to grab the ones that really appealed to me and some just general, you know, I wanted to get a whole list that's like not just one generic type of graphic novel. I am the graphic novel reader of the group, so I'm very pleased to present some really awesome stuff to you. I hope you guys enjoy. Our first one of today, starting strong, is Carmilla, the First Vampire. This was published February 28th, and this is by Amy Chu, Sue Lee, and Sal Cipriano is the illustrator. So we have, of course, our classic vampire novel, Carmilla, and we have a blend of Chinese folk tales, and we have an LGBTQ plus theme. Uh, we also have, it's about obsession and fateful family secrets, of course. The art style, if you go onto our show notes at darksideofthelibrary.com, you'll see a lot of these graphic novels, and the cover is stunning. I highly recommend checking these out, especially since it's graphic novels, if you are listening on the podcast. Obviously, on YouTube, I'm going to have everything right here. Anyway, so this one is about a, we have a idealistic social worker, and in 1990s New York City, it's Lunar New Year, she discovers that a lot of young LGBTQ plus females are going missing, they're murdered, and the police don't seem to care at all about what's going on right now. So clues lead her to this nightclub called Carmilla, and I'm already digging everything about this. So unfortunately, I guess, we'll see if it's unfortunate actually. I think this is going to be a couple of comics, but we have our main protagonist, the social worker. She starts to fall for some dangerous people And this ends up becoming a potential for her living in the middle of a horror story. And she has to deal with some of her own uh, identity issues and obsession and just some of her family past stuff. So if you are interested in this contemporary retelling of Carmilla in a graphic novel form, I highly recommend this is the Carmilla, the Last Vampire graphic novel. Our next book is called Carnivora. Carnivora? I mean, you can say it however you want to. I think it's Carnivora. This came out February 28th. This is by PJ Kayawa, and they did a lot of the art for the Assassin's Creed games, if you are familiar. Now this is their second original graphic novel that they are creating. Our main protagonist, Carlos, he's a policeman, and he's looking for his kidnapped wife in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. The thing is, he is led with one singular clue to this uh, apartment in the slums, and then he <laughs> he is told by some of the neighbor- neighboring people in the apartment, or just, you know, people, that there's these carnivorous creatures that are coming from the hillside or hilltop, coming down and causing destruction for people. Watch out, by the way, and of course, death and chaos ensue. So if you are interested, this that's all that the comic had to say about this. It's 112 pages. It's pretty short. This is by Behemoth Comics. This is Carnivora. This is by PJ Kayawa. Our next graphic novel of today actually got pushed to June 7th, but I highly recommend pre-ordering it because if you are a fan of the Dying Light video game franchise, you're probably going to love this. I have a, my best friend loves the Dying Light series, so I'm actually probably going to get this for him. I'm sad because I wanted to get this for him before his birthday. Anyway, so this is by Fred Van Lenti and Adam Markowitz is the uh, illustrator. So this is the sequel to the Dying Light 2 video game. This is like 15 years in between the two games. Our main protagonists are two orphans. Their names are Dowd and Aisha. They were adopted by this person named Berg. All they've known is this entire plague, the Heron virus. That's all they've been exposed to throughout their entire life, and that's just how they've been living forever. So when they were scooped up by Berg, 
they were told to become this thing called a night runner. And that's essentially that they had to work together to steal for him. And this was to enhance his big, you know, like he's got his whole, not a career, but he runs the, the gambit, right? So finally, they're really tired of working under him and just being controlled by this person. They decide that they want to create a plan to run away together. Um, so Berg gets wind of this. They decide to sell off Aisha to a rival, a big rival. And the whole premise of the comic is that Dowd needs to find their lover from this rival and go through all of these harrowing experiences and dealing with the plague, plus uh, Berg and whatever he's got going on. So if you're interested in the Dying Light series, this is a fun sequel to kind of complete the, I guess, the culture surrounding the Dying Light world. Uh, this is Dying Light. This is going to be coming out June 7th. This next one's a little strange, so I'm probably going to have to read some of the publisher notes for it. This is called Hustle and Heart. This, this came out February 21st. This is by Heath Amadio, Colin Bunn, Angela Rosano. There's a lot of people that have contributed to this, and it's uh, published by Oni Press. We have a year after his wife's death, Professor Derek Flynn finds himself waking up as if from a blackout in the middle of a catastrophic and fatal disaster. And he has no idea how he got there. But what has become more inexplicable is that this happens all the time now. In fact, Derek has been lying to his estranged teenage daughter, Casey, about his disappearances for months now. Desperate to get to the bottom of what's happening to him, Derek reaches out to psychologist Alice Myers, seeking help to recognize the terrifying visions that haunt his dreams, imminent disasters, both natural and man-made, that Derek now feels that he is somehow integral to all of these things. But... With the FBI catching on to his connection with these disastrous events, a manhunt begins. So there's a lot of things going on in this comic book. The art style is beautiful. The cover looks great. Um, I do recommend Oni Press is pretty great. So this is Hustle and Heart Foretold. This is uh, the first of a whole series of comics coming out. Our next one is really cute. So it's a little more melancholic if you feel kind of like an outcast this might be a great comic to read that's a little more wholesome and uh relatable i am definitely picking it up this is called my life among humans it came out february 7th this is by jed mccowan and it's 96 pages it's about a nameless alien data compiler and they come to earth to study humans setting up shop in the outskirts in a small desert community, the robot has to work under secrecy. Like, the humans cannot know that they're there. It's kind of like a cute little anthropologist, but like a sneaky anthropologist watching people. Anyway, so they have to report back to their manager at home using these spore-like technology. And not only that, but it can read the minds of his hosts using that technology. The robot takes a special interest in one of his first people that he runs into to study. Not runs into, but secretly watches, named Will. But an accident happens where Will's family catches on to this little robot, and that proves to be a problem. Even further, the robot realizes that they have a forbidden ability, which is to control the minds of humans. So now the robot needs to keep himself a secret from his manager and the humans that are becoming more and more suspicious of him and come to terms with the ethical decisions that he they have to make <laughs> as they go on observing the humans and possibly uh, controlling minds. So this is my life among humans. It's pretty adorable and the cover is cute. It's very interesting. And this is by Jed McCowan. Next up is more of a deluxe version. This came out Valentine's Day, which is perfect. It's called Love Everlasting. It's volume one. Joan Peterson discovers that she's trapped in an endless, terrifying cycle of romance. It's a problem to be solved, a man to marry, and every time she falls in love, she's torn apart from her world and thrust into another tear-soaked tale. Her bloody journey to freedom and revelation starts in this 
breathtaking, groundbreaking collected edition. And you can see on the cover that she's holding a shotgun. She's bloody. She's wearing a just a crazy wedding dress. It looks really fun. This is Love Everlasting. This is by Tom King, Elsa Charioteer, and Matt Hollingsworth. Our next graphic novel is another I'm going to be picking up for sure. This is one that came out also on Valentine's Day. It is by Eric Svoft. I think I said that wrong, but it's translated by Melissa Bowers. It is a nightmarish debut about our uh, wellness industry and consumer society, and I'm here for it. So it takes place at this five-star spa. Uh, we have conference hotel caters to anyone who can afford it, of course, as is in the wellness industry. But at every turn where things should be fancy and great, Things are definitely a miss. And here's what kinds of things are happening. Like a demanding VIP client disappears without a trace. I mean, <laughs> well. We also have a business seminar that's cut short. Apparently, they're really long. We even have two lovers who struggle to escape the horror of everyday life, which includes horrific apparitions routinely haunting them. While all of this weird, like slightly off stuff is happening, Mysterious moisture damage is spreading throughout this luxurious hotel. Throughout the beautiful extravagant decor, we have this black viscous ooze that's flowing slowly through the labyrinth halls of this place. So mold sets in, which creates even further problems like hallucinations, skin disease, ghosts, malevolent spirits, all kinds of stuff is happening at this wellness spa. So if you're interested, I am. I'm very excited about it. It's gross, like it's grotesque, and it's got some humor associated with it, of course. Uh, I love the art style. It's definitely inspired by Junji Ito, who's the horror master as far as I'm concerned. This is Spa. This is by Eric Svotoft. Our next comic book is very similar to the previous one, but just a little different. It's more of an anthology this is called Sugar and Other Stories. This is by Joy San. I think that's great. A creepy horror novel by somebody named Joy. Yes. Okay, so this one comes out March 15th. This one has, I'm going to have to read it because it's all, it's creepy. Like the inside looks so, it looks really, really cute. It does. But it's actually very, very gory and violent. You kind of need a strong stomach for it. But it's so, it's just that juxtaposition with all the cute stuff. Anyway, a devoted yet immoral creature ensures a girl's blood sugar stays up. Like I said, this is an anthology. So here's some examples of those stories. We have a gory ritual that creates a charming woman's perfect smile. A neglected and overworked wife is slowly subsumed by violent fantasies. Um... So basically, this whole set of comic books in 160 pages, Joy San is exploring the ways in which we contort and control ourselves, balancing the bloody and brutal with unexpected levity. It looks great. The cover is creeping me out. It's just like a weird tentacle with ooze around it that's holding a lollipop and teeth, just teeth chomping into it. It's cre It's actually just really eerie to me. I don't know. Teeth. Ugh. Anyway, so this is Sugar and Other Stories by Joy San. Our next graphic novel is Beyond Lovecraft. This came out March 6th. This is by Jasper Bark and Rob Morin. We have three short stories in this, and they almost seem like, not retellings, but additions to some of Lovecraft's classic novels like the Mountains of Madness. So here we have Occupy the Mountains of Madness is one of the stories, which is an anti-capitalist campaigner stage a protest in the Antarctic city of Elder Things to challenge the dark powers that lie behind big money. These tales explore the mythos of Cthulhu, the terrible truths to be found when we stray outside the bounds of everyday reality. There's a lot of really fun stuff in here. It's almost like a mashup of... <laughs> Lovecraft and Dr. Seuss is what the publisher is saying. So it's kind of adorable. 
I love it. So Beyond Lovecraft is highly recommended. So definitely check out Beyond Lovecraft if you are a Lovecraft fan or just love all of the cosmic horror creature manifestations. Next up, we have one that is definitely necessary. It's a Mike Mignola. He writes this one. It's the British Paranormal Society. Time out of mind. This one has been pushed to April 4th. Um, so we have our British Paranormal Society members, Simon and Honorora, or Honora. I think it's Honora. Uh, they arrive at a place called Noxton together, but with separate intentions. So one wants to uncover information about the town's strange traditions, and then Simon is searching for his missing assistant. We have separate inv investigations that lead down the same twisted path and to the same dark secret that is behind Noxton's innocent facade. I like this. This is probably, this is going to be great. The art style is fantastic, of course. It's not Mike Mignola doing the art. There's uh, Andrea Moody is amazing. So check out British Paranormal Society. Excellent. And it's for pre-order right now. Uh, it comes out April 4th. Our next one is, I'm briefly going to talk about it because it's not even available on Amazon and I'm, I'm struggling to find it. It's called Chrysanthemum Under the Waves and it's beautiful. The cover is stunning and it came out March 24th. It's a series of blown out black and white silent films from the 1940s and it's kind of an experimental haunting experience. It has um, our author Maggie Umber basically took these images and created these silent stories while she was going through time, very stressful times like divorce, dealing with a serious illness and even being hospitalized, uh, relational addiction. So it's very moody, very deep, dark, and it has a lot of musical undertones too, which I'm trying to figure out how that works. She's drawn inspiration from like Goya, Shirley Jackson, Elizabeth Rowan, and Sylvia Plath. It's definitely you know, probably morose, but intriguing. I'm really sad that I wasn't able to get the inside of it, but maybe you can. This is Chrysanthemum Under the Waves. Next up is Hell Sonia by Christopher Hastings and Pascal Quilano. So typically I don't talk about mainstream comics and Red Sonia is a big, big comic franchise but this one if you want to start you know jump on the bandwagon and maybe like start up a red sonia series the hell sonia is starting off by itself she is the ruler of hell currently she lords over the pit fiery pit of hunger and she's kind of done with this evil shit as it says <laughs> uh so she will bind together lost souls and rove the multiverse to fill hell's belly with only the most deserving of its punishment. That's really sweet of her. If you, for some reason, did some evil deed and you are now being sent to Hell Sonia's realm, there is, poss there is a possibility you might actually be saved, depending on the amount of evil that you have done. But if you want to check out some mainstream comics that's a little darker, Red Sonia is definitely a little sexier for sure. Uh, check out Hell Sonia. This comes out and it was pushed May 23rd. I literally just looked at this. It was March and now it's in May 23rd. So sorry. Ugh. Okay, next comic, which I'm thrilled about, is called Sacrament. It comes out March 7th. It's by Peter Milligan and Marcella Frusen is the illustrator. This is combining two of my favorite things, The Exorcist and Alien. I don't know how they're doing it, but I need it in my life. This is 128 pages. The art is very different and interesting. I love it's definitely got some gore in it. Basically, we have mankind has left Earth into space. And we have a disgraced priest who's called to action to perform an exorcism on a remote space colony. And basically it says, no matter how far you run, you can't escape your demons. And that the devil is in fact a real thing, maybe out in space. And in space, nobody can hear your screams or prayers, but screams too. Ah, it's great. So this is called Sacrament. I'm very excited for this one. Next, we have another one I'm very thrilled about. There's a lot of comics that are coming out that I'm just like, ah! I just need them all. 
Okay, so it's Tombs, Junji Ito story collection. It's another add-on to his uh, to- Tomb Town world. This comes out March 28th. So countless tombstones stand in rows throughout a small community forming a bizarre tableau. When fate awaits a brother and sister after a traffic accident in this town of the dead, what fate awaits a brother and sister after a traffic accident in this town of the dead? There's multiple stories. We have another tale of a girl falling silent. Her tongue is transformed into a slug. It's Junji Ito. This always happens. Can a friend save her? And then we also have when a young man moves into a new town, he finds the house next door only has a single window. What does his grotesque neighbor want calling out to him every evening from that singular window? I love Junji Ito. He is the master of horror. He's amazing. I'm very thrilled about this. So this is Tomb's Junji Ito story collection. And lastly, we have West of Sundown. This is volume one. Out Beyond the Dust in Dark. This is a terrifying tale of Old West, survival, blood, and monsters. A beautiful vampire has to flee monster slayers in New York City. And they also want to reclaim their ancestral soil that restores her undead flesh. But the world has changed since she was reborn in the New Mexico desert. And now, Constance Thera Abend and her loyal assistant, Dooley, must adapt to life in the rough frontier town of Sangre de Moro, where all sorts of monsters have settled. The art is great in this. I love the cover. Again, it's kind of bright. It's definitely... I, I've never really enjoyed a lot of westerns. It depends. But in a horror setting, especially vampires and monsters, I, I just feel like it fits so well. And this is pretty dark and grim, bleak, kind of emulating Old West and Vampire. So check this one out. This one is West of Sundown Volume 1. This is by Tim Seeley, Aaron Campbell, Adrian F. Wassell, Jim Terry, Triana Ferrelli. There's a lot of people who've contributed to this. Thank you so much for listening to this podcast episode or watching over on YouTube. Make sure to subscribe, vice versa, to each. That way you can actually see my face and the cover art on YouTube. Or if you're just listening during a long car ride, you can do that too. We like to publish every Wednesday and Friday. So make sure to spread the news to your friends who also like dark reads. It really helps us out and helps other dark readers find us too. Make sure to rate and review on your favorite listening app and subscribe and comment down here. What kind of comics have you been reading lately? I'd love to hear from you. It'd be awesome. And you can join us on our socials at Dark Side of the Library on Instagram and Facebook. So join us over there for additional reads that we might find. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. We will see you next time.